Hi, my name is John Leader. I'm the creator and author of Beautify. And today I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about Beautify 3, the uh, next version that it'll be releasing February of, of next year. And uh, some of the different items and aspects the team has been working on as we've been moving through Alpha. Uh, some of the biggest updates that we have are in the form of the, the baseline uh, creation of all of uh, the basic compute components for the framework are in. We have uh, lots of, of new uh, design concepts normalized in their, their terminology so that they're more semantic and easier to work with. We have uh, additional interfaces that uh, allow you to uh, interact with the components in more intuitive ways that allow you to uh, have more consistent results. And we've also been working a lot on the actual usability of the various parts of the framework from making it easier to uh, manipulate and work with custom styling, as well as how that gets implemented into your project. And some of the new browser features that we get to take advantage of uh, as we move away from the Internet Explorer 11 platform. So some of the changes and improvements that we have coming from components. Stated at the beginning, the basic components for the framework are all complete. These are components that form the, the foundation uh, for larger implementations. Things like alerts and banners, ratings, as well as um, uh, around 42 other uh, basic components that uh, from buttons to chips and you know, avatars that we use to create and build uh, some of the more complex uh, composition components. Uh, we've added a lot of new uh, interfaces for how you can work with these different components. Uh, things that simplify the way that uh, you are able to interact and make different design choices and changes within those components. And we've also uh, added some additional utility classes to help you in addition to modifying components based upon their normal prop structures, but also being able to make uh, additional changes uh, through the help of uh, utility classes for text and, and color and different transforms and, and whatnot. Now, one of the things that we've recently got in the framework that the team has been working on is uh, the form elements in our validation systems. Uh, we have a new validation system that is now uh, expanded in, as an available uh, inline provider, as we call them, that allows you to uh, not only implement any type of component or element as a validatable item to an extent, but we've also added new functionality for how uh, you can perform validation, including asynchronous calls, uh, in addition to the already existing uh, version two functionality that's available today. This uh, validation system is, is built in to the new form components in addition to being uh, available in line as displayed here on the, uh, on the right, where we can now uh, take something that was previously kind of hard coded into uh, inputs and now is something that is flexible and can be used in multiple places. We've also worked a lot on uh, improving the, the style diversity of input components with a new concept that uh, is in material design called density. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And uh, in addition to a lot of these, these new features and functionalities, we still have uh, ported over all of the existing version two styling that uh, in addition to the new available options for density that we've created. 
one of the, the cool things that we've recently implemented were a uh, animation positioning system for how our, our menus and our dialogues are what we typically call uh, detachable components, how those operate. And one of the new things that we have um, that is applied to the way that menus and dialogues animate whenever their activator is clicked is a transform activator late lo uh, excuse me a transform that is uh, based upon the activator's location so as you can see in the animation here uh, whenever we open up the dialogue as opposed to it being an element that just animates from the center of the screen uh, we're actually uh, now transforming uh, these detachable elements from their original activator location that to really kind of uh, Im improve the 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 visual feel uh, of of the actual functionality but also uh, to improve the performance and how smooth it is whenever you're working with these components so that there is crisp animation there's no jitteriness and this is one of my more favorite parts of the the new version uh, with all of the way that menus uh, as well work and how they position on the screen. We have a lot more functionality uh, that allows the user to, to make uh, some really nice aesthetic designs and decisions within their application um, and just giving the user more options overall. We have some normalized concepts um, that I like to call semantic customization options that uh, we have begin to kind of normalize uh, or pull together multiple different design aspects within Beautify and try to put them under a, a particular category or uh, similar uh, options between multiple components so that when you're working across the framework, you, you'll have uh, different uh, components that you're working with, but they'll still be based upon the same kind of interface that you're working with with multiple different components. And kind of what I mean by that is we have a new concept called variance. And what this is, it's a way for us to take some of our mutually designed exclusive uh, properties and functionality within version two and, and kind of put it behind uh, a, a naming convention so that we can reuse this throughout and actually expand the functionality that is used uh, or available, excuse me, for multiple different components. Uh, an example being the, the file available that exist uh, primarily in the card-based components are contained, contained text, text, outline, and plain. And, and these, these different uh, design styles are, are represented in version two, but they're not represented behind any specific uh, naming convention. So what we've kind of done is to, to homogenize this functionality. Um, we've made it so that it is reusable throughout any card S component, alerts, sheets, banners, uh, list items that give you some additional control over the uh, not only the uh, the visual aspect of the component, but uh, you know, kind of I stated before, homogenizing, making this similar throughout multiple uh, different implementations, so that we can uh, have uh, similar and same functionality for multiple components that didn't even have the ability to implement these styles in version two. One of the other things that we have implemented conceptually is uh, the density from material design. And what density is, is a uh, declaration of how high or vertically how much a component takes up space-wise. Whereas size is, it modifies components padding, modifies font size, and, and general takes up potentially a larger uh, space on X axis. Whereas density, we're just kind of reducing the height. So what we've done here is we've we've added the ability to to combine multiple different aspects of, of sizing uh, 
that's available in the, in the framework. Version two of right now, we have you know, regular sizing for extra small, small, default, large, and extra large. Um, with the introduction of density uh, for version three, we, we've taken the uh, some components that you may have worked with that had a, a dense property um, has now been kind of split into two, which those are now compact and comfortable. And these are essentially uh, iterations of uh, a certain uh, pixels for pixels to be exact that uh, reduces in scales so that uh, a button or an input will maintain the same visual look. However, it will take up physically less vertical space. And then for components that support both size and density, these actually work together. So you can do things such as having an extra large compact button, if you so choose. And what this does is it gives a lot more options for the user to be able to build their application so that you don't have to have such um, a blocky design or something that is that takes up a lot of uh, space on the page. You have the ability now where you, you can globally change in the framework all components that support density to a more compact style. And these are some of the, the interesting ways that you can interact with uh, these uh, components like button and inputs list item. We've worked a lot on the interfaces for working with components to give users the ability to solve their problems in different ways. So right now in, in version two, most of the components that have what I'd like to call uh, textual interface properties, things as you can see on, on the slide for, for uh, properties defining you know, title, subtitle, text, this exists on some components, but it was never um, synced in a way that was similar across the framework. So now you're gonna have the, the ability to customize components in, in, in three ways for, in, in most situations. We'll have the default approach, which are elements. This is pretty much what Beautify 2 is now. Um, in some cases, very verbose to get to a specific uh, styling. Uh, which is required by the structure. For example, if you wanna have the card text styling in a card, you have to have a V card text component. So, so what we've done is we've, we've, we've kept that as a baseline, but we, then, we've, then we went ahead and said, okay, we're gonna add some props. We're gonna say, you, know, you can uh, specify any one of these particular uh, textual interface properties, um, title, text, subtitle, the ability to set avatars or icons common uh, commonly used and requested features uh, that usually the user kind of has to manually apply themselves. Uh, instead, giving a, a baseline that is not super flexible in some ways, but is flexible in others. So if you want to just apply some text to a card with a title, you can do that with a prop, or you could do it with a slot where it gives you the same markup that you would uh, write normally by default with elements, but and also you can make additional changes inside of it. So just kind of giving you some flexibility for how you can approach your problems and you can actually mix and match these together and, and, and come up with a, uh, a unique design, implement uh, design implementation of your own. So we have some usability improvements, quality of life changes, uh, things that uh, improve not only either the developer experience, but how we interact, um, or how we and other users interact with uh, the framework as a whole from that perspective. Version two, we used, uh, we still use SAS, but we used the import uh, approach towards implementation. Uh, we've converted our SAS, uh, our SAS for Beautify into uh, what are called modules. This is to coincide with new updates to the Beautify loader and our new Vite plugin, which is available now. And uh, what the purpose of this was is to create a 
a more easy to use interface for SAS, but to also resolve issues that we were having with uh, prepend data and polluting uh, the global variables within SAS. It's also given us the ability to do some pretty cool things like with the new Vite plugin, you can expose the ability to modify any and all styles, just as you would with version two. But anything that's not modified and such actually has a pre-compiled CSS file specifically for either that component or functionality uh, that will be used instead of recompiling, which gives drastically faster compilation times. And not only is it cons considerably faster to work with a view to five implementation where you are customizing uh, the variables and you're customizing uh, you know, uh, SAS that's compiled uh, during dev time. Um, now, not only is that faster uh, because for components that aren't being used for variables, we already have that pre-compiled, uh, but also we're, we're hooking into Vite, uh, which has kind of been a lot of the team's focus as of late um, for uh, development process. We've been able to take advantage of some evergreen features from browsers, such as focus within and CSS variables. Working with a button, uh, for example, now provides different visual cues based upon how your interaction occurs with that element. So if you're clicking on a button, chances are you're aware of the location of that button and um, we don't need it to provide an outline whenever we click on it. However, if you are tabbing through your application, it may, it's not as obvious whenever a button slightly dims in its opacity. So now we have some new functionality um, with the uh, you know, advanced browser support to be able to have a distinct visual display based upon how an element is interacted with. In regards to the CSS variables, these existed in version two. They're now first-class citizens of version three. They're used um, heavily throughout the framework and are now a kind of the baseline for allowing our um, customization options um, you know, within the framework uh, to expand that out and make it not only easier to modify, but giving you more options to change in, during those modifications. And um, so right now the team is heavily working on the alpha. We have been making really great progress. And as of right now, we are, are set to deliver Beautify 3 in February of next year. Uh, we really are excited about a lot of the new features that are coming to the framework. And we're really excited to, for you to get to check it, check it out and, and take a look. Um, you can check out the alpha right now if you go to next.beautifyjs.com. Um, and you can also follow our releases on the GitHub um, releases board or even communicate and reach out to the dev team on Discord at community.beautifyjs.com. My name is uh, John Leader, and um, this has been uh, kind of an update on Beautify 3. Thank you.